it's Miss Lady Petal here and I've got a little bit of a unique project here now this was a beautiful digital scale <laughs> and this morning my son opened the cupboard door and it fell out and the glass top smashed and on the glass top there was berries and I really loved it and it's pretty new actually I hadn't um, I hadn't actually had it for, I'd had it since Christmas so it's only three four months old and uh, after my husband saw that I was a bit upset about it apart from the fact that it's something I use all the time and it's essential and I only bought this because my other one was stuffed um, I thought to myself great I'm gonna have to go out and buy another one and I had spent a bit of money on this one because it was um, pretty it had red cherries all over it. It was really, really pretty. Um, but this project, that the, my husband then thought, well, how can I save this? Because, you know, he's really mechanically minded and he's pretty darn awesome, if I do say so myself. Uh, so what he came up with was he has this piece of very heavy plastic from some packaging that we had. And he's cut it out roughly. He will trim it again, but he's roughly cut it out and even masked off um, what I will be doing and what he's essentially done here is given me something to paint he's walked in and said Peter I think you should paint this so you can kind of see it here. and that's exactly what I'm going to do now my painted surface will go underneath so I need to all I need to do is think to myself okay I have to actually do this in layers. I'm not going to draw a pattern at all. I'm actually going to use a lot of masks and stencils for this because I need to actually think that once that bottom layer is down that shows up and what I'll do throughout the project is keep turning it over to see how the build up actually goes. Um, my kitchen I like to have red things in it so I will use red predominantly in the early layers but uh, other than that I'm excited I I just have to see how this paint actually takes to plastic that's the main thing here and it makes me wonder whether I need to put some sort of coat primer on it and I'm gonna have a look into that before I actually start okay so for this project, when I looked at paint, I did some quick tests on the paint and none, nothing would really adhere to the Perspex. But what I did find was that I have this Tiger Glue that says it will adhere to paper, card, wood, plastics, metal, cork, fabrics, carpets, leather, canvas and many other materials. Now my initial thought is, instead of then trying to paint on this, and having a design that having some designs that I absolutely adore the easiest thing would be to use some of this paper that I've been hoarding that my friend Vicky gave me and then the pattern is already done and I can just adhere it with the glue and move on so that's exactly what I'm going to do here I like this square of paper here so I'm just going to get my scissors so I've got my scissors and the square, I love the fact that this is like patchwork paper. All of it is like patchwork paper and it's all in rough geometric squares. So even though the squares within the squares are all odd shapes, they, you can get, you know, uh, rectangle and squares out of this particular paper. So now I'm just figuring out, well, I've got to cut this paper and I want to get the thing... Um, exact so so I'm just cutting out the template and uh, I'm then deciding well okay so I actually have to apply the glue onto the colored spots so I'm going to get the glue and I'm going to use a credit card to scrape it on now I'm looking to see whether it dries clear and nowhere on the bottle does it tell me that this stuff dries clear so I'm taking a risk and honestly my husband it, this is he can make another one so I thought no I'm just going to take a risk so I put it all over the place except where the masking tape is 
and I've scraped it over and then I've sat there and wiped it off with a baby wipe all the stuff that came off first because it was on the front and I've started wiping it off the front and then off the masking tape because I know I've got to cut through that later so you can see my head I had to lean over it to make sure it fit so now I'm using my bone folder to actually get and smooth out the glue and it looks really milky look at this so it looks really milky look at that <laughs> so I'm like oh no <laughs> anyway so as it of course it started to buckle a little bit because it's thin wrapping paper but look it dried clear and there's a few little bubbles in it but I kept pressing them down and to be honest they're not that noticeable so I'm very happy about that so now I'm cutting out where the masking tape is and it works for me I'm very excited about this I had to cut again the masking tape and some of the edges are not the best because of the glue the masking tape and the paper so <coughs> excuse my coughs it worked for me and I'm very happy with it so this is what I had to do and then when this was completely dry I gave this to my husband and he actually then put the whole lot together so here I am just cleaning the whole lot up cleaning the gunky stuff off having a look at the front and basically just doing a clean up job ready for my husband to actually be able to glue it together and I, by this point I'm getting excited yay have a look it's done now if any of you are thinking this is slightly dodgy cut I can't take responsibility for that <laughs> my husband did the template and we have two pressure sensors here so we have on off and the type of grams or whatever it is so when I press the on off for a time it turns off so it's all working really well it's all um, sorted out and oh, I'm really impressed <laughs> I must admit I'm really impressed that I got it back that it's now more indestructible than what it was because it won't shatter on the floor so if it gets dropped again my husband's used a silly concealant to put this on and it's still like awesome <laughs> It still goes with my kitchen because it's got lots of red and um, orange and stuff in it and it's um, arty and crafty enough for me. <laughs> so there you have it. One way to repair something. I remember reading in a Womankind magazine, the last one that I got, and it talked about that if we lose the desire to repair things, then what does it say about us? as a race that we would be so quick to discard then we would th rather than put some effort into the the value of things to repair now to be honest with you for this thing I just thought when I had a look at the broken glass I didn't realize you could repair it but my husband has a different way of looking at things and he thought to himself no I can repair this my wife said that she really liked the cherry pattern on it so how can we figure out a way to give her what she wants and to not have to spend 40 or 50 dollars on another one because that's roughly what it cost so there you have it a way to do something that to save 40 dollars with stuff that we had at home and a way to use something exciting for me and everything worked out really well and it might not have at any step during the process but it did so learn something new today i certainly did it keeps you young ciao for now